I love taking road trips by car with my bike in tow. These sojourns are great for introspection and reflection. Many times, I just turn off the radio and allow my thoughts to carry me. This year's road trip is going to be an entirely different one, as I will be riding my bicycle 3,600 miles from Santa Monica, California to New York City. It all started last summer when I was on a road trip back to Phoenix from a speaking event in Detroit. Where I, when I was passing through McLean, Texas, which is east of Amarillo, I caught some cyclists who were riding on the old Route 66. And it reminded me of a road trip I made years earlier where in that very same area I felt compelled to go for a bike ride and I parked the car and I got on my bike and took a 35 mile, a 35 mile spin around that area. And as I was passing under the bridge that marked the turnaround point of my bike ride and caught one last, last glimpse of those cyclists as they were tooling across the countryside, I said to myself, man, would that be a fun thing to do? But then I reminded myself and I declared, I said, if I'm going to do something like that, there's got to be a higher purpose behind it. Of course, seeing those cyclists reminded me of my emotional connection to my bike ride in that area, you know, years earlier. So I went home and I looked up that area and discovered that it's one of the most well-preserved parts of Route 66 in the entire route. But I also discovered something else even more incredible. I don't know if you remember the movie Cast Away with Tom Hanks where he's stranded on, a, on an island and at the very end of the movie he's out in the middle of nowhere Texas trying to figure out where he's going to go next. Well it turns out that that scene was filmed not too far from my bridge. It seemed like it would be about a month later I woke up in the middle of the night and I just had a vision and it was of me in the middle of nowhere with my bike, a Bible in my hand and a bunch of cyclists around me and we were having a prayerful meditation session with God. And it was at that moment I realized that God was speaking to me saying this is a ministry, not a bike trip. And at that time I made a commitment and accepted his call to ride my bike across the country using my personal story and his word to give as many talks as possible to, in support of family members who are dealing with the addiction of a loved one while providing education to those others around the issue of addiction in our communities. Being that I'm the father of a young man who's been battling his own heroin addiction for several years, I know what it's like to live in, in an environment of chaos and despair as you struggle with watching somebody who you love dearly dealing with an adversity like their own personal addiction but I also know that there's hope in the chaos. Needless to say, it's been quite a journey since that time in August last year when I made the decision to ride my bike 3,600 miles. The trip begins this July 30 in Santa Monica, California, where I will ride all of Route 66 up to Chicago, go up to Michigan, through to Detroit to Pittsburgh, and then east to New York City, where I will end, with our, end the trip on October 2nd. Because I will be biking around 400 miles each week for all of August and September, I've also had to make some changes. I've learned a lot about the mental and physical preparation required to ride your bike four, five, six hours a day instead of what I've been used to doing, which is about an hour and a half to two hours a day. I've also learned a lot about the different levels of meditation and quiet time associated with longer bike rides. And I've also discovered the importance of refueling and rehydration when you're on your bike that long. To say the least, this has turned out to be a much bigger project than I originally anticipated, especially for a one-man band like me. There were many times where I felt like I was on my own island trying to bring this, type, this project together. There are several times where the, where the frustration, the lack of progress, the stress of the training just got the best of me. And I found myself declaring, I can't do this on my own. It also seemed like every time when I said that, something incredible occurred. One, and I remember when it, the first time that happened, one day after a particularly frustrating string of, of, of events, I got an email from a, a guy in Texas that I'd never met. And he said, I'm a dad, I'm just like you. I'm a cyclist. I have a son who's battling his heroin addiction. If it's okay with you, I'd like to ride my bike with you the week you're going from Amarillo to Tulsa. Suddenly I wasn't alone anymore. There was actually somebody else. 
His offer and interest encouraged me to stay the course even when things get difficult. It also gave me something to look forward to, somebody riding with me in the middle of my trip. Or the time that I came to the realization that there was tremendous risk biking more than 3,600 miles and I probably needed a support vehicle. With that realization, I reached out to every automotive manufacturer and local main dealer I could think of, hoping to inspire them to donate a truck or car, only to strike out every single time. One day a good friend of mine came up to me and said, would my sprinter van help you with your trip? My response was, in more ways than you realize. He said, let me talk to my wife and see what we can do. Shortly after that, he came up to me and he says, if you need the van and it will help you for your trip, it's yours. My friend and his wife gave me more than a van. They gave me the gift of encouragement and reminded me of the worth of this mission. Having the support of that van meant that I now needed to find people to drive it, which thankfully I've been able to incredibly, incredibly, many of those who have offered to take a week out of their life and drive the van have been good friends, but even more incredibly, have been many. some of them have been just inspired strangers from across the country. Adding a support vehicle led me to a new issue, lodging for me and my support volunteers. Where do we stay? Do we camp? Do we hotel? It wasn't really something I budgeted financially for it. And as I started to freak out, I got a note from a woman who I didn't know that said, I was think, looking at you and your bike trip and what you're doing, and I was just think it's awesome. And I saw that you're going to be in Detroit for three days, and if it would help, I'd like to offer you the one-bedroom apartment that I rent through Airbnb. I was incredibly moved that this woman was inspired to help and that she saw meaning and purpose in this mission. And of course, as I share these stories with you, I am reminded of all that's been accomplished in an incredible, unpredictable ways. Every time I felt isolated and frustrated, different people have unexpectedly showed up with their gift of encouragement and resources. Their help has allowed me to focus on the true purpose of this journey, which is to support and educate others. So far, I've been able to confirm 18 speaking venues and I'm working on six others and new opportunities present themselves. But I'm also reminded of my most difficult and challenging issue right now, which is funding. You can imagine the cost associated with a ministry like this. There's the little things like my bicycle, which over the course of 3,600 miles is going to require a mechanic and maintenance and spare parts and equipment. And then there's the taking the cost of, there's the cost of gas, bringing a support vehicle from California through Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, Oklahoma, Missouri, Illinois, Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and New York. And then lastly, there's the cost associated, the cost related to food and lodging for me and my volunteers over the course of 64 days. And you can only imagine what that would look like if you thought about how much it would cost for you to feed and house you or your family over that same period of time. But I'm reminded, despite the challenges and despite all the other issues, I am reminded why I'm doing this. You know, my first 100 pedals mission trip started in San Diego, where I stayed with people I didn't even know. And then I moved uh, up to Dana Point where I stayed with some friends and went, got up early and went for a bike ride through Camp Pendleton with a local cycling group. Raced home, barely had time to shower before my speaking event at a local church. And at that event there were probably 20 moms and dads and some adult children. And after the talk, one of the adult children stood up and said, I am that child in my family. I am battling an addiction. Your talk, I've been clean for two weeks, and your talk has inspired me and given me the confidence that I can't get through this. And it was at that time that I realized exactly why I was put in that room. I was there to speak to and inspire him. But the beautiful story, beautiful gift behind that story is that he actually spoke to me. It's experiences like this that remind me of my calling to use my story and my gifts to connect with others who are looking for light and love in their lives. But we cannot do this alone. Help me help you. Help me provide the love and encouragement to, 
to you and those like you who are struggling with the addiction of a loved one in your family. Help me help those who are struggling with addiction in their lives to find the courage to cross the bridge and embrace the possibility of recovery in their lives. Help me use my story and my perspectives to educate those in your community so that they respond to and treat addiction differently. Help me spread this message of hope and love by sharing this video through your email channels and on Facebook and on LinkedIn with a personal call to action to support this ministry. If you help me, I promise I will continue fighting and I will keep moving forward until this issue of addiction stops destroying lives and hurting families. Help me. Please find a reason to give. Thank you.